many friends. Come on down. Hi. You've been selected. Find a seat. There's a lot of space open, especially on the right side. Uh, I don't think anyone's claimed spots, but welcome, everyone. Hello. Guys, there's nobody on the couch. Silas, yeah. this couch is pretty comfortable. It is. It's pretty comfortable, yeah. You know, despite its color, it's actually pretty great. Yeah, nice C-shape. <laughs> <laughs> find a seat, find a seat. Hey, hi friends, hi friends, hi everybody. Hey Andrew, what's up guys? How's everybody doing? Oh, I like this, I like this, I like this. Okay, y'all know what's up. What do we do on Sundays? Oh. Whoa, 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 whoa. What <laughs> was that? I my soul a little bit. <laughs> what was that? Yeah, yeah, we need, to, we need to do that again. Guys, what do we do on Sunday? Own the front. Yes, we own the front. What does own the front mean? That's a great question, Silas. I would love to tell you what it means to own the front. So on Sundays, we like to sit as a community in the front two rows on Sunday mornings and just worship together um, and just, like, be together as community, um, and we always sit in the front two rows. So you guys should come sit with us. If you're there on Sunday morning, come hang out. All right, I have some exciting news, actually. Oh, what is it? What is it? What is it? You guys ready? What it's is it? It's starting to get warmer a little bit. You guys saw, you know, Groundhog's Day. What, did, what was the result? I think it was shorter winter, right? Yeah? I With sure that, hope so. That means baseball, softball season starting. Oh. We, yeah. Oh. We actually have a church softball league. I don't know if you guys knew that, but... I'm actually part of the team, so it is. Oh, come on. It, it's actually so much fun. I've been doing it for the past two seasons. It's a blast. Guys and girls can participate. Come so on. If, you're, if you're interested, uh, it's on the Amplify app, or you can just reach out to me, contact me, and I could, you know, let you know how to sign up because we're always looking for more people. So that is an opportunity for Does each and every one Does anybody here play softball? Yeah, who's played, who's played a sport, period? Raise your hand. Oh, yes, come on. we have athletes in this building, so <laughs> you guys can play softball, yes. That's good, that's good. <laughs> All right, guys, um, ladies, I have two announcements for us. First, we have the women's breakfast that's happening on the 9th. It's going to be March 9th. Um, it's at 10 a.m. It's only $10 to come and attend. Um, you can register in the Amplify app. You guys should come hang out. Also, on Friday, March 15th, we have Lisa Turkers coming here. Um, it's between, there's different prices of different tickets that mean different things, but you can check the app. It's 35 to $75 depending on what you want to do. Um, again, you can look in the app. There's all the information there. It's going to be um, super fun. Also, if you want to serve at the, at the event, it's free. So let us know. And yeah, look in the app for more details. Awesome, awesome. Thank you, Jenna. Next thing I want to encourage around our generosity, guys. Come on. We have the amazing opportunity here at Inspire Collective to be able to sponsor a Compassion tile. Who's heard of Compassion before? Raise your hand. Compassion? Yes. Amazing organization. You know, kids all around the globe are being able to be poured into from people all across the world. You know, people that are more financially available to give. So we have the opportunity to give to a Compassion child. Her name is Katrina. Uh, she's in Uganda. And uh, there's Meg, you know, giving her a hug. So. Uh, we, Aww, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> um, like I said, we have the amazing opportunity to, to give that. We, I think we have a QR code, um, maybe on the next slide. And also, we, you already know, if you got, <laughs> if you have, a, what's it called, Cash App? Cash yeah, app. I don't even know because yeah, I don't even use Cash, cash app. app. But if you have it, there's a In way to give that Michaela, way too. If you have yes. Cash App, you should do it. Exactly, yeah, reach out to Michaela because she loves it. Um, but yeah, so if you feel led, scan the QR code and... Uh, We'd love to just be able to pour out and give. We also have opportunities to be able to write letters um, to her. So yeah. if, you, if you're interested in doing that, you know, talk to me, talk to Michaela, talk to Jenna. Yeah. We'll be able to if get you connected. If you're also interested in, like, reading her letters that she sends us, just come ask us. We can show you guys on the iPads. We can write her letters. You can also read the letters that she sends us. So, yeah, just let us know. Yeah. All right, let's take a moment so we can pray for our giving. Dear Jesus, we thank you so much for tonight, God. I just thank you so much for the opportunity that we have here in America that we can just step out and say, yes, God, I'm gonna give you know, a portion of my income to people like Katrina in Uganda, um, that we can just give and out of a cheerful, hopeful heart um, to be able to bless her in many different ways. So I just pray for tonight. I just pray that you, if, if you feel led, just that we could give um, in your glory, God. 
and I just pray for her, pray for, you know, new beginnings, new uprising, and just the new opportunities that she has um, within Uganda to be able to serve your kingdom. So pray less in your name. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Silas. All right, guys, in case you couldn't tell, we have a little bit of a different setup here tonight. So I'm going to introduce Mike. He's going to come on up and tell you guys what we're doing tonight. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thanks, Jenna, Silas. You guys are incredible. All right, so uh, obviously, uh, welcome to IC. I'm pretty sure I recognize all of you. Um, how great to be here tonight to celebrate our brother, Sean. Yes. Sean, you can come on up, brother. Um, he used to go by future pastor Sean, but now he goes by future soldier Sean. So we're going we're gonna to have a little interview session here with Sean tonight. Uh, we're going to have some serious questions for him. We're going to have some funny questions for him. You can sit, brother. You don't got to stand at attention yet. You don't got to stand at attention yet. Yeah. Um, yes, yes. Uh, I just want to give a massive shout out to uh, Brady. He's standing in the back near the pizza. If you guys don't know who Brady is, he's so mad. He's so mad I just did that. Um, he actually uh, bought the pizza for us tonight. So if you have time after this, please say thank you to him personally. Uh, it's so generous of him to do that for us. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, after the interview, we are going to have cake. I would love to get a group picture, so please try not to, like, rush out of here. Um, I would love to get a big picture with Sean on the stage, um, like, just around this area here with you guys all in there, okay? All right, sweet. Well, we are going to dive into our interview. Um, I kind of shared with Sean before we came up that... I shared with him that some of the people in the room were wearing red, white, and blue for him or camo. I don't know if, he, if you guys even realized that. But, man, you, some of you guys got some head-to-toe fits going on. Like, Jay Mears is back in the booth right now, but he is, like, head-to-toe decked out, dripping, dripping with red, white, and blue. We appreciate that. Yes, yes. Mackenzie's got camo and red, white, and blue on. And then I know there were some Let's others go. as well. Uh, Silas pulled out a special jersey for us that was uh, vintage red, white, and blue that I've never seen. But you had to be on that team to get that jersey, I think, so. He was one of, like, 12 people to get that in the whole world. Um, yeah. All right, guys. Uh, we're going we're gonna to dive into some questions. Uh, we are going to pray over Sean at the end, so we're not going to pray now, but we are going to pray uh, after the interview, okay? Sean, how you doing, sir? Oh, man, I'm truly blessed. I love you guys so much. I thank you guys, and I'm really appreciative to be on this stage right now. All right, brother. Well, well, just in case there's anyone in the room that doesn't know you maybe as well as I do, right? Uh, if you could just give us a brief, like, who you are, like, where you're born at. Obviously, you've lived many places. You're here now. Like, the Lord brought you here to Pittsburgh, brought you to Amplify. Um, but just tell us about yourself a little bit, and then I'm going to ask you your first question for the night. Okay. Um, so, a little bit about me. I was born in Gren Greensburg, Pennsylvania, Westmoreland Hospital, February 18th. <laughs> Let's see. I was... Uh, I've, I've been called from the Lord by the age of five. I was preaching sermons and uh, actually even in the pulpit, which was crazy, um, praying and laying hands. I was just freshly anointed with uh, chasing after God with everything I had from the very early age. People were actually like kind of freaked out. They're like, how is this five-year-old telling us about heaven and the describing disciples so accurate? But um, God really laid that on my heart. And for a long time, I... Uh, I was on the right path. And then when I got to college, I messed up a little bit. And um, God brought me back. I was the prodigal son for sure. I know some of you guys can relate in that in the room. And so um, right now, I'm in a new season of life where God's going to just take me to uh, new heights so I can lead more people to Jesus. Amen, brother. We can give it up for that. Come on. Yes. All right. First question, Sean. Could you share with us what inspired your decision to enlist in the United States Army and embark on the journey of basic training in Uganda? Oh, that's such a good question. Um, what made me join the United States Army was, one, I felt the need this would help me lead other people to Jesus more. It would give me a bigger influence. Two, I thought it would bring great discipline in areas that I lack, like financial, physical, a little bit uh, spiritual. Usually I'm really good on spiritual discipline, really good on that, but I still lack some of that. So I felt like that would bring me to a higher level of where God's calling me to be. So um, 
I hope that answered it. Yeah. Cool. No, it does. It does. It's inspiring. You know, we all we all do different things in life. Some of, I was talking with some of our guys. They came straight from work, right? So, but no matter where you go, it's your ministry, right? This is just a new opportunity that the Lord is opening for you. Obviously, there's a lot of a lot of things that in, in your walk right now, where you're at in life, it's going to be helpful, like finances, and you're going to get to meet new people. But it's ultimately your ministry with what you're going to be doing. So, the first stop's Georgia, right? Yeah. And who knows where you go from there. Uh, Oklahoma. Is it Oklahoma? Yeah. I thought it was Georgia. Man, I'm I, glad I said something because I'm going no. to Georgia in a, in a month and I was going to come see you. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> I'm, I'm so glad. Uh, yeah, it's in Oklahoma. Originally, it was going to be in Georgia, okay. but then I would have left on the 20th. All right, I, had, I was my, working uh, with outdated information. Job, my MOS switch. Okay. There must have been Marine information. I was working out of date there, so <laughs> Army doesn't make mistakes. Okay. <laughs> All right, first question uh, to shift gears that's a little bit not as serious. So this was actually a question that was submitted by several people to me to ask you up here tonight. We, we need to have like an actual answer to this. You can't like just escape with, the, with just a vanilla answer, okay? All right. Why the Dallas Cowboys? Okay, um, so Dallas Cowboys. Growing up as a little kid, I watched them win two, three Super Bowls um, in my lifetime. Uh, my dad's a big Dallas fan. My mom's a diehard Stiller fan. I uh, I just chose Dallas because at the time I loved Troy Aikman, Deion Sanders, Emmitt Smith, and uh, Marvin Erlin and all the good teams. So it was a great team. That's all it. Do you, got, do you guys accept that answer? Is that going to work for you? No? I, yeah. I am in Pittsburgh, so I mean, yeah. <laughs> I expect the hate from yeah, yeah. Pittsburgh. Yeah. No, Sean, it makes all the sense in the world, brother. But uh, in all seriousness, next question for you. How do you anticipate your Christian faith influencing your experiences and your interactions while you're at basic training? Oh, well, um, I expect it's going to be a lot harder, but I've also experienced already, like, my captain and uh, first lieutenant and even um, first uh, sarge, they would they'd be cussing, and then I would walk in the room, and they would start to apologize. Like, the Holy Spirit's already moving, and I haven't even, like, officially put my uniform on yet. And, like, it was just amazing to see that, like, they would change their behavior just because I walked in the room. Like, the respect there, and then it's crazy because, like, I'm, like, a private first class, right? So I'm an E2. Um, God promoted me, like, last week, so I got a promotion um, before I even got in, so... That's another four hundred dollars added to the check, but <laughs> but yeah, like just being in the room, God is already shifting things, and I'm gonna use this uh, influence to lead more people to Jesus, and that's the goal. Nice, brother. Yeah, the the Holy Spirit is just going before you, you know. So we're excited for you to actually be there, and and for the Spirit to be with you while you're there. And those are just a couple of individuals that are gonna see that contagious smile that you bring. You know, in the light that you shine every single place that you go. All right, next next one for you. Um, this might cause some controversy. What? Sh- sh- shout out D. Miller. So, <laughs> this this might cause some controversy love you, in the Dory. room. Yes. <laughs> he thought he was gonna sneak in here. Do you see that? Uh, <laughs> um, this this was always a hot topic in our small our small groups here at IC. So. I had to ask this question. I'm super excited for we've, this question. We've talked now. about it before, uh, but I'm excited for the ladies to be able to hear this one too. Sean, who is the best Marvel character in the Marvel universe? That's such a hard one. I'm I'm gonna have to go with uh, Captain America, because you know why? Because I'm Team Cap. He was the most solid. The only reason why Thanos even won the first time is because Iron Man was a crybaby and signed the little records. Um. Also, we're going to go Team Cap because he's a Christian. He's the only one that actually stood up for Jesus out there when other people were on the, on the plane talking about, oh, these are gods. You shouldn't jump out. And he's like, there's only one God, ma'am. And he reminds them that as he jumps out. Solly. All right. I, I think we can accept that answer a little more than the Dallas Cowboys one. So <laughs> well done, sir. We applaud you for that. All right, Sean. So. This one, this one could be a tough question, and I think it's one that we all relate to, even not in military setting, right, just in work setting or school setting or uh, who knows, just out in public or strangers. Um, what's your plan to navigate any potential conflicts that you might have because of your Christian beliefs 
uh, especially with the demands of something like the military lifestyle? Um, the military is actually very, uh, I would say, complementary complementary to uh, Christian faith. Like, even as I, like, joined, they have Bibles for the Army, the Navy, the Marines, the Coast Guard. Um, all branches have their own specific Bible. So, like, I got an Army Bible. I actually have a couple of them already. Um, and you're allowed to, like, read those. And then on Sunday, they have worship service. Now, you do will, like, you will come in contact with people who are atheists. And you will come in contact with people who are other faiths. But as far as, like, it going against my faith... Um, they're pretty chill on that. Like, they're not like you can't say anything about Jesus. They actually recommend it because going through the um the punishment and of suffering to build you back up, um, you're gonna need some type of faith. Well, amen. I think that makes me feel a whole lot better about you leaving and going. So I hope everyone in the room and on listening also feels the same way about that. I just learned something. I actually didn't know that it was that deep. So that's it makes all the sense in the world. All right, Sean. Next one. We all know that you love to eat you love more than the that's, average bear that's facts more than the average bear like i like to eat but you take it to a whole new level but they say the fastest way to the heart's through the stomach so i guess it makes sense <laughs> sean if you could share with everybody if you could have somebody prepare each meal of the day for you breakfast lunch dinner and dessert what would you have for each course throughout the day I know a lot of people are going to hate me for this, but I'm not really a breakfast eater that much. It's, it's the most important meal of the day, dude. I, I'm, I'm not, but, like, if I had to eat breakfast, I'm going to get, like, French toast and, like, an egg sandwich or something. But I'm not, like, a, like, like breakfast eater. For lunch, though, lunch is actually clutch for me. So, like, I might get, like, a sub or, you know, like, maybe uh, another sandwich. What's a sub? Like a hoagie? Uh, like an Italian BMT, I have to represent my mom. <laughs> See, like my mom's half black, half Italian, so I have to like represent the Italian. So the Italian BMT is my, uh, I would say for lunch. She always used to make that with Doritos as a kid. All right, how about how about dinner dessert? Uh, dinner, I would have to choose my favorite, which is either tacos, pizza, or pasta. <laughs> like those are like the three. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not much of a chicken wing type of guy. What about dessert? More pizza. What about dessert? Are you sweet? Uh, you strawberry, sweet tooth? strawberry cheesecake or uh, chocolate or chocolate cake. All right. Classics. Can't go wrong. Thank you, Sean. All right. So how do you plan to seek support and maintain your spiritual well-being during your training? So that could also include, like, trying to keep in touch with us here in Pittsburgh. Um, during my training, I'm going to be gone for uh, 25 weeks, right? So um, 10 of those weeks is basic training, basic training, and AIT is also at the same place for me. It's not always like that for everybody else, but for me, my position, my job, my MOS is going to be uh, 13 Bravo, which is the cannon crew, which is like this massive gun where you put like a, a missile into it and it shoots off. It's really crazy. It's really cool. Um, but in general, um, so how am I going to keep up with all my family and friends and also the people down there who are getting ready to uh, learn about, um, oh, yeah, they can hear me. Now you're official. Yeah, now they can officially hear me on, online. Um, yeah, so you guys missed out online for a while. But, uh, yeah, so I have to basically, um, I'm going to start a Bible study um, for the soldiers down there. And then... For here, if I'm allowed to get my phone back every Saturdays, I heard those are rumors. I'll reach <laughs> out to you guys. But if not, I'll write you guys a letter or something uh, so you guys can know that um, God is good and he's just leading my life and to lead more people to Jesus. So I'll do something to shout you guys out for sure. Amen, dude. Please do. Please write us. We can go old school. We'd be, you know, so. Old school letters. So please, please write us. Um, and if you get your phone, that it may or may not be confirmed <laughs> that that's a thing. Try to send us whatever you can. If it's pictures, if it's updates, whatever you can. So. Don't, send Don't send pictures, speaking from experience. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I will not send pictures. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Uncle Sam. We just love Sean. Man. All right. Uh, next one for you. 
what are you going to miss most about Amplify Church? And then outside of that, what are you going to miss most about the city of Pittsburgh? Uh, I'm going to miss you guys the most about Amplify Church because I love you guys. And we've been together for what, like three, almost four years now. And um, coming to this church really changed my life. I was, at this time, I was a prodigal son. And I didn't even have my car or a license or anything. And I walked in this building. And in the moment the Holy Spirit hit me, I ended up getting my car and my license, um, changing my life drastically. The next time I came back to the church, I actually had three people in the car bringing them to this church. So, like, God, like, completely transformed my mind back when I just came into this building. So this place will ever, forever be home. And I, I love you guys. Um, so you guys will be the ones I miss the most. The city of Pittsburgh, I really don't care for it. <laughs> I, I only love the people of Pittsburgh. The weather sucks here. I, I've lived in other states, so I know for a fact the weather's trash here. Um, but yeah, but I love the people. The people of Pittsburgh is what I love. The people. I think that's a fair, very fair answer. And uh, Sean, it's been an absolute blessing and privilege for me personally. I know I didn't know you the, entire, the entirety of those four years. But I'll never forget when I, I, I always remember the day I came up the walk and you were at the door. I'll never forget that 100%. But it has Love been you, an Mike, absolute man. privilege to be in this place with you. Love you too, brother. Okay. Uh, almost there, almost there. So are there any biblical principles or teachings that have provided comfort for you as you embark on this new, on new chapter of your life? Yes. Um, so, um, <laughs> Hope I don't get in trouble for saying this, but <laughs> uh, this biblical principle, Joshua 1 9, was uh, prayed over me from uh, our former pastor, Pastor Jason. And like, I feel like that was ingenious, like, where God has did something that your whole life has really been shaped for, right? So, in case people don't know who, what Joshua 1 9 is, right? It's be strong. Be courageous that for your Lord, your God is with you wherever you go, right? Like, that's the, the verse, right? Um, And that verse was just, like, over the whole year has been shaped of being strong, be courageous, right? Where God is, like, with you, you know what I mean? Do not be afraid. Do not be dismayed, you know? So, like, it's one of those things where I feel like that principle, like, don't be afraid. You're going to go through some hard things in life. Don't be uh, discouraged, because God's got you and God's with you. And so I think that principle has been like a constant theme. Even like without me doing it, it's just like God has literally been putting that on me. Also, another one was been Isaiah 6, 8. So like that verse right there has been like constant. Those two verses have been, I don't know, the last two years. I've probably heard those verses over 100 times, which is crazy to think about. But those principles have literally just been, like, all my life. And I'm like, oh, and I'm focusing more and more to just obey God in that way. Thank you, Sean. Uh, those, those absolutely align with your walk right now and where he's sending you. And, and for everyone in the room and listening, like, what is it that God has you pointing to? It could be do not be afraid, right? 360 sometimes is enough for each day of the year, right? Um, you know, there's there's no reason to be afraid when we're rooted in Jesus, right? Uh, and then also, here I am, right? Like, yeah. for all of us, and for you, it's it's sending you to, to Oklahoma for basic, and then who knows from there, I know you have aspirations to go to the other side of the globe, you know, people that maybe, maybe don't know who Jesus is, or it's kind of frowned upon to you know, even say the name, but, you know, we know that you're, that you're willing to just be a vessel like you always have been. All right, for this next question, we might need someone to come up to the stage and join us. I would love to have him on the stage two weeks in a row because last week was his first week on the stage. It's only appropriate because the question has to do with the podcast known as Technically Short. Yeah. So we would need Mr. Thomas Carney to join Woo! us on the stage to answer this question. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Yes, Thomas is uh, behind the scenes servant. He uh, <laughs> he does everything behind the scenes. All right. So the question is, 
technically short, all of your fans want to know, what is going on with the show, right? So is it going to continue? What does the future hold? What does your relationship, your relationship look like beyond uh, Sean leaving on Monday? Could be for both of you. You, you want to talk first? <laughs> <laughs> we'll go with TEC first, the first half of Technically Short. So Thomas can talk first. Yeah. So the future of Technically Short. Um, we've talked about it a couple times. Um, the plan right now is we're going to, we're going to. <laughs> we're going to do our best. We're going to do our best to keep it going, and if it makes sense, we're going to um, do it remotely through this one software that we found, and and do that for as long as it makes sense. And that might mean forever, and that might mean like a an extra month. Um, and then while he's in, and while he's in basic, and we, uh, have right now we have uh, episodes out till April, um, we are going to, I'm gonna start looking for some uh, guest co-hosts and uh, host it with a couple of different people. And then after that, he's back and yeah, that's the plan right now. And if it doesn't, if that doesn't work, then we've talked about a possible rebrand. But that's a plan B. <laughs> also, our relationship <laughs> beyond the podcast. He's Sean's like, what about us, man? What was that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Okay, I'm going to talk a little bit. What's what's that? <laughs> so for those. For those that don't know, Thomas and Sean are roommates. Yeah. For those that may not know that information, so. So, the, yeah, that is essentially how the podcast started. For like initially, the way he moved in, like, it was, I won't, I, 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 it won't take up too much time, but, like, <laughs> the way he moved in was, like, nuts. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, <laughs> this guy. <laughs> Like, I, we uh, had a Bible study at our place, only time it happened, and I made a joke about having a free room. I was, like, 50% serious, and, <laughs> and he's like, dude, my lease ends at the end of next month. He goes, cool. Then as he's leaving, he's like, man, he's like, man, um, and he's, he's leaving, he's like, man, come to Bible study, get a place to live, look at God. <laughs> I'm like, Glory. He already was, like, picking his room out and everything, wasn't he? <laughs> you, you took him around the place. He was, like, measuring stuff. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, it was, uh, but no, it was uh, a blessing for sure. Um, it was, like, something I didn't know anything about what I was getting into. But it was a, like I said, it was a blessing to get to know you and get to, like, um, live with you for, what, like, two years? Two and a half, one and a half, whatever it was. Uh, <laughs> Um, and do like, yeah, and I'll say for, to everyone, like, I've seen you grow from, like, since you, since you moved in until now, you aren't the same person you were when you moved in. Yeah. So, like, I've seen God change you. I've seen God grow you. So, like, I'm excited for you to go to the army. It's going to be great. Thanks, man. I love you, man. <laughs> Give it up for Thomas. Thanks, Thomas. All right, now we need we need the short answer. Uh, yeah, uh, honestly, uh, God has blessed our podcast, and he put grace on it. So uh, I told Thomas that he has whatever uh, God lays on his heart to just do. And at the moment when I'm in basic and AIT, I hope that there's a whole bunch of co-hosts. Uh, maybe my mentor, Brandon. Uh, maybe Silas. Maybe David. You know, those are just a few ideas thrown out there. But uh, I, I think it would be great for somebody to take the, the mantle, maybe even a spinoff of just him and Tom, with Thomas. That would be good. You know, I would love to see the uh, leadership growth. So anyway, I, I'm going to be supported, and I'll have my unit support it. And if I'm squad leader, I'll have the whole unit, uh, like a whole bunch of units support it. So, yeah. Thanks, brother. So last serious question for you. Kind of goes off what you were just saying. So if you could share with everybody, like, you shared with where, where you're going with basic and what you're going to be doing. You know, um, what are your what are your dreams? What are your goals for the 
like the next level, like the higher level, like five years from now, where do you see yourself uh, within the army or beyond? Oh, okay, so five years from now, uh, shoot, um, God is, if I'm if I'm around, I'm truly blessed, and I have a whole plan for God to just be able to uh, expand His kingdom. Like my whole purpose in life is to love God. To love people, teach people to love God. I stole that from my mentor, and I meant that when I stole it. Like, <laughs> that was my purpose. Like, he, that, that's literally the reason why I'm on here, on, on this stage right now. It's just to lead people to Jesus. So if I'm able to do that, I think using the army as the biggest influence will, like, expand uh, more people to be able to, to take me more credible and... I, in five years from now, I plan on having a church, hopefully, another a branch off of Amplify or uh, Sanctuary or if it's a different name, wherever God has the name. But I do plan on having a church to just lead more people to Jesus. And five years plan, that's what I'm using the military for. They know that when I was coming in. Yeah, man. Well, we know that, he, that he's in control of everything. So uh, I think just... What you shared is exactly what it is. It's our only purpose is to love people, love God, and to teach people to love God and to do it well, you know, and to steward that. Um, you've done that in this house uh, time and time again, every single Sunday, midweek services, doesn't matter how, you know, how bad the weather is in Pittsburgh, like you show up here every single time for every single thing. Um, anything that you'd like to share about your servant heart that you've demonstrated for all of us, um, like what it is about just serving uh, God, like what it, what it does for you and how it's transformed you? Um, yeah, that's the easy one. So if we circle back to what I talked about earlier, I came in here a prodigal son, and I mean that in every aspect of life. I was at my lowest point in life, doing stuff that I had no business doing. Should be dead, should be in jail, a whole bunch of stuff. So to come in and walk in to this building and then God's Holy Spirit to restore my mind, to renew my faith, to set me back on fire how I used to be when I was a kid. This place of serving comes from gratitude to God. So it's never like, oh, I have to serve. Man, this sucks. I can't believe this. It's never that attitude because it's thank you, God, for not letting me die. Thank you, God, for not letting me be in jail. Thank you, God, for changing my life. Thank you, God, for the family that you provided at Amplify. Thank you, God, for my friends and family that I'm leading now to Christ. I have a friend who was an atheist, and now he's a believer, and he comes here. Like, you know what I mean? Like, and that's God. We used to argue all the time. He came to this church, and he had a demonic possession, and he, he went into the car and ended up going to prison for two years. But in those two years... He found God, and when he came back, he came to this church, and it's all because of God. And his life was forever now blessed because of knowing God. He thanks God that he went to prison. Why? Because now he has a relationship with God. And for me, this place is a place where I met God. So, like, I can see where some people in the Old Testament would call it Bethel. And that's where I, would, I can relate to that, like, where you just met an area where you met God. And I met God here. I feel like I could run through a wall right now after you just said that. But praise God for all of that. And praise God for you, Sean. We love you. Um, speaking of your mentor, I believe Pastor Brandon is in the room. We're yeah. Actually gonna, yeah. Give it up for Pastor B. Woo! Yes. Give it up for my mentor. Yes. <laughs> so uh, that concludes the questions. You're off the hot seat, my friend. Uh, you, Pastor Brandon you. is going to lead us in prayer over Sean. Uh, if you guys could just extend your hands towards Sean, and we're going to close out in prayer. Uh, Sean, we love you so much. God's going to do amazing things. Father, we thank you for Sean. We thank you, God, for his life. We thank you that you go before him, you stand beside him, and you are always with him and working through him. And so, Father, I pray even right now as he's preparing to leave, would he never forget, even looking around this room, 
that he is surrounded and supported by your church, your people, and community that is lifting him up. Even while he's away, we will be praying for him, cheering him on, encouraging him, supporting him. And Father, would he, would he even as he goes into new places and new spaces, would he maintain that servant's heart to point people to you in everything that he does? And so Holy Spirit, would you just fill him afresh? Would you empower him to do every good work you've called him to do, to be who you've called him to be? And Lord, would he not grow weary in doing good, but would he continue to sow the seeds you've called him to plant? And so we just pray blessing over his life. I just pray your peace through your Holy Spirit over his life, your joy and your power to do all that you've called him to do. We thank you for who he is. We thank you for the man of God that he is. And we thank you for the many lives that will know you because of him. And so, Lord, we send him. We're grateful. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, time for a group pick. So if we could orderly come up here and not stampede each other. <laughs> uh, we're going to definitely get a picture with Sean um, so we could bring the lights up a little bit. Um, we're going to grab the cake. Meg, will you grab the cake? Or David. <laughs> um, and let's get a pick, and then we could eat, eat some cake, have some time in community. If you got to go, that's fine, but we would love to hang out for uh, as long as we can.